Okay, all of that is set up as a sale. I had to sell my wife, would you like to dance? I had to sell my wife on, can I get your phone number? I had to sell my wife on, you should go out on a date with me. My kids are selling me every day. Daddy, can I watch a movie? Daddy, can I have some ice cream? Daddy, can we go to Disneyland? Everything is a sale. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. So, Wes Schaefer of the Sales Whisperer podcast, how are you doing? <laughs> Did I have that right, Wes? We'll have this edited. So. I Mostly, right? It's the sales podcast, but you know, right, let me do that intro. Let I am the that. sales whisperer, so it, so it's all right. together, man. Oh no, we got to keep that in, man, because it shows it shows that you're human. You know, because everybody sees sees you so perfect. Oh, yeah. but every now and then, once in a while, you you make a mistake, huh? Uh, yeah, every once in a while, we gotta we. we it's probably your first and only one of all of twenty twenty one. We keep a log, and then at the end of the year, AJ gets to hit me upside the head for every one that we got. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of hits nah. coming this year. <laughs> man, so how did you get crap. started in sales, Wes? Oh, man, I, I was a secret agent in the Air Force. They trained me to be this, this fancy salesperson, man. It was like this top secret. It's more top secret than UFOs and Area 51. You, you probably didn't even know the Air Force had a sales division, did you? See, you didn't. You didn't. That's how did not. secret it was. Um, but yeah, I was in the Air Force, man, and I got out in 97 uh, because I wanted to be paid according to my production, you know, not just time in in grade, time in service. And, uh, you know, I'd been married at that time. We're going on 26 years now. So we were married right at two years. We had a baby. We had another one on the way that we didn't know about. Uh, and I left. I resigned my commission. Uh, I was a captain in the Air Force. And jumped into commission sales you know that's it's interesting i think all of us go through a, a awakening in our lives or at least some of us and for everyone else it could come as well but with that idea of when you're working for somebody else they're setting the wage of what you are worth and then you're like well, wait a minute other people make way more money than i do uh in an, in an hour because they were setting with their work was worth and that becomes the minute you switch that frame then you begin looking for different and new opportunities yeah and it's um i think being a w-2 employee at least in sales and it may be across the board but i mean my world's always been sales uh i think we've been sold a little bit of a bill of goods you know, and that, you know, unless you're an entrepreneur doing your own thing, you know, you ain't crap. You're not living your greatest and fullest potential. And, you know, you're a wimp. I and mean, it's like, you know, I've had over 500 interviews on the sales podcast and I've talked to a lot of, a lot of good people with a lot of good stories. And a lot of them, you know, went out on their own, but they did it after building a foundation, right? paying off debt, uh, saving up to, to make that launch. So, you know, that W-2 job can be a good thing. I think it, it, everything has a trade-off. I, I think what happens is we show up to work and we're not, our, we're not truly passionate about it. So we're not focused on it. So we're not focused on it. So we're not, we're not producing all that we can and we don't produce all that we can. So we got to stay later, blah, 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 to get, to catch up on what we, should have been doing what we could have done if we truly focused for eight hours. So now we're like, I give my company all, my, all of my life. I get there early and I stay late and I miss dinner with the family. I got to be out on my own to be fulfilled. Well, maybe you just need to focus. You know, maybe you just need to give them a full eight hours and get your butt home. You know, and then you have the energy and the time to do other things. And maybe that other thing is to launch your own thing. Okay, but maybe not. But you know, like they say multitasking is the art of doing multiple things poorly, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, 
I think we could all benefit from a little more focus on what the hell we're working on. Well, that certainly brings up a point in in sales that if you are going to go out on your own, one of the things that you're going to have to do is to sell your values, sell your abilities, bring awareness to what you're able to do. And number one, it's about creating content, right? Creating things for people to be able to see and put value upon. Then two, being able to promote the things that you're able to to create, and then third, to capitalize on that create creativity of, of selling those products, services, or ideas. And, at, and with those three things, if picking up sales gives you an opportunity to not only sell yourself, but sell for anybody. It is a skill that is transferable to anywhere that you're, you're gonna go. Well, the biggest misnomer I hear from people, you know, oh, I'm not in sales. Like, we're all in sales all the time, okay? It's like poker. If you're sitting at the table, you don't know who the chump is, then it's you. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Uh, you know, you walk into a restaurant. Well, you got to, you know, stand in the entryway, approach, you know, stand in line, approach the hostess, Put your name on. Oh, it's 45 minutes. Please go stand in the corner and we'll call you when we're ready for you. You know, then you're seated and the menu is presented in a certain way. And oh, oh, happy hour prices are only available if you're in the bar, not over here. Oh, you want to substitute uh, a salad for the fries? It's an extra dollar ninety nine. That they're selling you. Okay, all of that is set up as a sale. I had to sell my wife. Would you like to dance? I had to sell my wife on. Can I get your phone number? I had to sell my wife on. You should go out on a date with me. My kids are selling me every day. Daddy, can I watch a movie? Daddy, can I have some ice cream? Daddy, can we go to Disneyland? Everything is a sale. Okay. A sale is, hey, read my headline. Follow me on Instagram. Open my email. Subscribe to my newsletter. Everything is a sale. Hey, boss, I need an extra dollar per hour. Why? Sell me on that. It, everything is a sale, okay? And once you understand that, life gets a whole lot easier. Well, I, I think it's important to realize that sales is a skill set. It's not a single skill. You sure. need to be able to assimilate a bunch of different skills to be successful at sales. And a lot of what you're talking about is what we see in pop culture and the way that sales is depicted which often leads a bad taste in our mouth, thinking that it's right. manipulative, it's memorizing a script, it's forcing people, m manipulating people to take action into something. When actually sales is a lot more subtle than that, and it's a yeah. confluence of a lot of skills that you have to balance in any conversation, whether you're selling yourself, you're selling a product or a service. And we recommend everyone in our audience when you're starting out in your career, you should take on a sales job. You should put yourself in that position because it will force you to learn skills that are applicable, as you were saying earlier, in every facet of your career, whether you wanna be an entrepreneur or an engineer, or you wanna be an artist. You have to sell your ideas to get people on board, to participate, to get ahead. And many of us haven't had that experience. Right. And I think from your earlier point, you know, if you are in a W2 role right now, what skills are you acquiring along with that paycheck? If all you're doing at the end of the week is counting the dollars earned and you can't wait to go hang out with your friends and spend those dollars earned and you're not taking yep. into consideration the skills that are coming along with those earnings, well, you're gonna fall behind those who are getting ahead and realize mm -hmm. that the set of skills of sales as we're gonna break down here is important in every single aspect of your life. Dating, yeah relationships and business. well certainly and you brought up your wife we were talking about the restaurant and people tend when they hear the idea of sales they tend to think that it's a transaction where money is present and that's not necessarily that's just well it's one aspect of sales sometimes you're just trying to persuade people on ideas you're you're persuading them to get involved uh, in, a, in a group, in a, in a project. So I think when we put, when we talk about sales, there's a dollar sign that goes above it, but the actuality, it's root 
cause, its root base, is persuasion. Persuading you that what I have is worth this much money, or persuading you that this is a great idea that you need to adopt, or persuading you that I'm the person that you should be going to dinner with, and, and that you, we should be having a transaction of time, of effort. I mean, there, there is, there's always going to be a transaction. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. When two people meet, right, in, in a sale setting, um, you know, maybe, you know, you, you come to Best Buy, I'm the salesman, and like, I see what you got. You got an older iPhone. Well, it's pretty safe bet that you probably want to stick with an iPhone, but I'm still not going to assume that. And I'm not going to assume because maybe you're comparing me. Maybe you're going to compare it to the Apple store. Maybe you're going to buy something used on eBay because maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's for your kid, right? I'm not going to buy my 13 year old kid a brand new, you know, 12 Max Pro Max. She gets a, a U7, okay? <laughs> so I'm not going to assume. So, like, hey, you're welcome to the store. How can I help you? I'm not going to assume anything. You know, well, I'm considering iPhones. Fantastic. Is this for you or for someone else? Yeah, actually, it's for me. What do you have now? Oh, well, I've, you know, I've been sticking with an 8. Still got an 8. Okay. You want to go with an 11? Kind of stay kind of just one step below? Or do you want to make a leapfrog all the way to the latest and greatest? I don't know. What's the benefits? So I'm asking questions, right? Always be concise. Always be curious. Our new ABCs of selling. I'm curious. I'm courteous. Always be courteous. Welcome. Thank you for coming in. What brings you in today? So now we get to talking. Now I understand what's driving things. Oh, your business has changed. You've got a new job. You've launched a, a new podcast. You're going, you're doing more live streaming, more video. Oh, you need better resolution. You need more stability uh, for the camera. Oh, okay. Well, so now I'm going to talk about stability and resolution and upload speeds and all that good stuff. You're like, oh yeah, I need that thing. Right? So am I persuasive? Yeah. Am I manipulative? No. I'm just asking your question how are you going to use this thing you know it's like hey you know it's for my it's for my my daughter she's you know she's turning 15 well she's been a good kid she, you know COVID. she you know she made good grades despite all this i just wanted to kind of give her a little thank you a little appreciation oh fantastic you know but look hey the 11 pro is just just about as good especially for a teenager and you're going to save you know 45 percent oh hell okay deal Oh, and by the way, if you trade one in, you know, you can get another one as well and get 50% off of that. What, what? So now I'm, now I'm selling two phones. Now it's easy to sell the cases, the, the, the extra warranty, blah, blah, blah. So I downsold you to upsell you and everybody wins. Is that, is that persuasive? Okay, whatever word you want to use, was it helpful? Yes. Absolutely. You know, who decides that? You as the customer decide. If I've I, always said that the the difference between influence, persuasion, and manipulation is going to be the intent behind it. And yeah. every everyone needs to get comfortable with with asking what the idea of this in, this intent is or what your intent is, but also understanding that, but not assuming what other people's intent is. Uh, and just having an understanding of what yours is, because on face value, a lot of those tactics are going to look the same, but it does come down to the intent of it. Would somebody who knows they could help somebody be a bit manipulative to sell something that they know is a solution to their problem? I mean, how many times have your parents manipulated you to get you to do the right thing, to eat your vegetables, to do the thing, to study? Uh, you know, um, th we've learned it from the best mm -hmm. and, and they wanted the best for us. And then on a longer scale, they know that those lessons, though, there might have been some manipulation behind it. You're going to be a, a better person for for that. And so at the, at the end of the day, we need to take responsibility for ourselves, for what we want, how we're going about it. 
And it, that's, and I think the minute you get into these moral quandaries, rather than asking the questions and getting the answers, I think people get a little bit nervous of what they might find. So they just back out and they say, well, sales isn't for me because I'm not that kind of guy. Well, yeah. What do you mean you're not that kind of guy? You don't like helping people? You don't like solving their problems? But that's all it is, right? And you know, you're talking about like your parents, your parents know they have the long-term vision, right? They of know where they do. how they want to shape you and mold you as a human being for life, right? And as salespeople, it's like, well, I gotta, I gotta maximize my earnings. I gotta, I gotta push them to get the 12 Pro Max and the case and the extended warranty. It's like, okay, yes, you do need to maximize earnings for the company, for yourself, for your family, okay? But maximize earnings over what time frame? Over that 30 minutes interaction or over your three or 10 or 30 year career with the company, okay? Because by me asking questions and maybe even downselling you a little bit and leaving a little meat on the bone, as soon as you walk out of the store, you take a selfie, you go live, man, I'm leaving Best Buy. I I just got Wes Schaefer, he was the man. He didn't push me, he helped me. He showed me all the deals, the bargains, he saved me. I was willing to pay $2,000. I walked out of there, $1,800, he saved me $200. Come down to Best Buy, and ask for Wes, tell him Johnny sent you. Next thing I know, I'm making all these sales because they're super easy because I left a little mean on the bone, right? I didn't, I didn't go for that last drop, but I, I've created uh, my own little acronym, right? A, B, C, D, E. Sticking with the ABCs, right? But we, everybody knows pipelines and funnels. And, oh, I just pack enough in the top, something's gonna come out the bottom. Throw enough crap against the wall, something's bound to stick. And funnels and pipelines are fine as a part of understanding your systems and your timing and your stages. So that's all, they're decent as a component. The problem is they're one direction. All right, a pipeline shoving it in from the left, it spits out the right. Pipe, uh, funnel, pipe, packing in the top, comes out the bottom. When I made the A, B, C, D, E, I put it in a, in a circle, like around a clock, and you're just going clockwise, and you're going from attracting people to you, you attract them with a podcast, you attract them with, maybe it's an ad, right? Driving them to a free report or opting for a webinar. Okay, now you bond with them multimedia multi-step get their email get their cell phone get their address get their twitter their instagram their facebook everything else connect with them meet them where they are you try to call me good luck with that you shoot me a message on linkedin i'll answer it okay so it's just our our preference but you're not going to reach my mother-in-law on linkedin you better call her she'll answer her phone you better mail her a letter right she she'll she'll read a letter so multimedia, multi-step. And then, so the third point is the, the cash, the close, the client, okay? So five steps, A, B, C, D, E. Professional salespeople understand that the cash is only the midway point of the relationship, okay? You come into my store and I sell you that phone, most people think that's the end game. I got to get as much money from Johnny as I can because I'm never going to see him again. Uh, all buyers are liars. If they're, how do you know if they're lying? Their lips are moving. I'm just going to take as much money as I can from this guy, and that's it. But in today's world, right, social media and, and reviews, you know, you're going to light me up. Yeah, you'll walk out of there. Yeah, I got my phone. You're like, one-star review. Wes was the pushiest guy. I would never do business with him ever again. You know what? I may even just return this stuff, even though it's a hassle. I'm going to pay more across the street because he just treated me wrong. So professional salespeople understand that the, the, the cash, it's the equivalent of a wedding, right? When, when, when we had our wedding ceremony, September 30th, 1995, was the relationship over? Was that the goal? Just to say I do? Or is that really when the relationship began? Right? Because all the way up until I do, we could unwind things. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and obviously you can unwind it afterwards. It's just a lot more painful and a lot more expensive. So at the moment we say I do, that's really when the relationship begins. So professional salespeople, again, going through the cycle, they understand that now we're moving up towards the you know, the, the seven or eight o'clock position. Now we delight, right? We deliver that wow experience.
So Johnny buys that phone from me and I just, when nobody's looking or it's like, hey, you know what? There's a sale on these cases, you know, and it's buy one, get one. You know, it's a free case. You just got to mail it in here and I'll mail it in for you. I'll rip the coupon off and mail it in for you. What, what? I give you a free case. Hey, here's the free charger. It was an open box. You know, we, it's just take it. Let me, I'm going to include it with you. What, what? So now I'm, you're singing my praises because I delighted. I delivered a wow experience. I, now I've endeared myself to you. Now we're back up to the 12 o'clock. You go out, you make that video. I just left the store. Wes is the best. What are you doing? You're attracting people for me. Right? So we're back to the attraction phase. And now it gets simpler and faster and easier. Now they come walking in. Hey, can I help you? Are you Wes? No, I'm not Wes. I'm looking for Wes. Because Johnny said, you're the man. Whew. Next thing I know, I've got a line out the door. Everybody else, they're going to go outside and smoke cigarettes and say, this job really sucks. I'm like, well, maybe you suck. You know, but I digress. Well, that, that's <laughs> an important point in all of this, that the goal is not just to get a single purchase. You're going to need a new phone. You're going to need a new car. You're going to need another program. You might need some more training. There's always opportunity for more if you take a relationship approach to sales yeah. where you are actually genuinely helping this person you're looking out for their best interests not your own bottom line's best interests and yep. when you do that you build an immense amount of trust which then leads to referrals leads to repeat business leads to people singing your praises word of mouth and those are the intangibles that and i wanted to ask you this you know, what has shifted in this, this marketplace, those are the intangibles that lead to the sales that so many are missing out on. Because as you said, people are more informed than ever. Word of yeah. mouth is a channel they look at, reviews, Yelp ratings, all of those things online to kick the tires to see what you're about and do you have the checkbox next to the trust that I need to do that transaction with you? Yep. But if we take a short-sighted approach of just going to follow the script, I'm going to pound you until I get you into submission and I get that last dollar out of you, wham, bam, see you later. Then all of a sudden, the next month, you're missing your quota and you're you're dragging and you're wondering, man, why, why am I not hitting these things any longer? Because yep. you didn't take the long enough perspective that our parents take when thinking about us. It's not about mm -hmm. solving those sort short-term pains. It's actually about taking so good of care of that customer that they can't wait to do business with you again and share it with all of their friends and family to do business with you.